Whether it's the regular season or the offseason, we have you covered as we give you the best Tennessee Titans and NFL news and insight that a fan could ask for. You're watching the Titan Upload Network. What is going on, Titans fans, NFL fans, people all over the world who are tuning in tonight? We appreciate you. We appreciate your support of the Titan Upload Network. As you can see, I have my dear friend James back with us tonight. Good to have him back. Um, we have an awesome show lined up for you guys. Uh, James Foster, formerly of no, formerly No Flags Film, he is now um, the operator of A to Z Film Room uh, and works for them. But he's going to be joining us at some point. He should be in here, I would say, in the next 10 to 15 minutes, I would hope. Uh, Teron Davenport was going to come on tonight, but he had to cancel. So you got me, you got James, and you got uh, James Foster. So we got two James on tonight. Um, You're out now. So it'll be a good show. And what we got planned for when James comes on, you know, he is a pretty much like a draft guru at this point. The guy lives, breathes, and eats. Uh, scouting players. Uh, he goes to actual uh, coaches clinics and all types of crazy stuff. So the guy is a hundred percent dedicated to doing what he does. And it's, it's pretty impressive. His YouTube channel has blown up. I mean, the A to Z film room has more subscribers than actual A to Z does. And it started years later. I mean, this, his thing started like a year and a half ago or something so it's pretty impressive but anyways james um so the the assistant coaches and the coaches were interviewed for the first time and the titans seem to have their uh their coaching staff completed at this point um i don't really know i i didn't i, I meant to make a graphic of everybody we hired all the linebackers assistant linebackers assistant water boys all different types <laughs> of stuff but i did not have a chance to do that but i know the main ones right you got yeah brian callahan you got denard wilson nick holes the uh offensive coordinator um which you know brian callahan's gonna be calling the plays and this and that um so I just kind of want to get your thoughts initially on this overall coaching staff. Like, who are the ones that you're really thrilled about? Who are the ones that you're not so thrilled about? And just kind of what do you think about it? Um, the, the one I'm really kind of thrilled about is Bill. Bill Callahan, offensive line coach. He's probably one of the most premier offensive line coaches in the NFL. Um, you know, and... The, the fact that there's going to be some continuity there. I don't think Bill's going to go anywhere. He, I think, you know, it's going to be one of those things where I think he stays for a while because, you know, he's coaching with his son. And, you know, the, the, for parents out there to, to, uh, to, to coach with your kid or to be able to, to work with your kid, do with your kid, you know, do things with your kid. It's a special type of feeling, you know, it's a special type of thing. Um, I'm also kind of uh, I'm kind of interested in Tracy Rocker. I really am um, the defensive line coach. I, I'm I'm interested in what he can do with this defensive line. Can he make this defensive line any better? Because this defensive line is really good. Uh, you know, can he take them to the next step of being elite of the elite? Um, then you've got you know the secondaries uh, coach uh, uh, Steve Jackson. Um, he's he's a guy who I'm interested in because this secondary has been garbage uh they have times where they play well and then they have times that they just like fall off a cliff and can't play you know can't you know couldn't i mean couldn't stop water from going you know from from going into a faucet you know um it's one of those things where i'm not sure what you know what uh what what this team was doing but those are the three guys who i think um have their work cut out for them right Tracy Rocker is going to be in a rock between a rock and a hard place because he's got to be able to uh, at least maintain what he's got right now on the, on the defensive line. He can't get any worse. If he does, you know, everybody's going to be screaming at him. He's in a rock between a rock and a hard place, but he also has to get them better. 
Um, Bill Callahan is working with, well, probably the worst offensive line in the NFL. Can he, can his genius uh, pull something out that the, the, the previous coaching staff couldn't? I don't know. And, you know, Steve Jackson is another guy who's working with a rough, he's, he's got a rough go there. So those are the guys who I'm looking at, you know, the, the, the everybody likes the coordinators and all that. I, I like the, you know, the guys who are down in the trenches, you know, making, you know, that making the, you know, uh, the, you know, making the, the sausage. Right. Yeah, man. I, I, and I think, yeah, it's all good points. I, I think, you know, one of the most, and, and shout out, let me, let me get to this real quick. Sauce monster with the nine ninety nine super chat, dude. It's good to have you back in here, Sauce. It's been a while. If you guys, Sauce, Sauce used to be like one of our, he's one of our OG followers uh, on the network and of Titan Upload to me. And he actually has a uh, Twitter that's it's kind of blown up for soccer. Um, so go follow at Sauce underscore Monstar. Um, so just like it's spelled in his name. If you like soccer, if you're into all that, um, go follow him on Twitter. If you put sauce monster in there it'll pull up too but uh shout out to sauce man and um everybody who's who's in the uh in the chat so far we appreciate you uh looks like james is here so we're gonna get him in the building here and let me fix this little thing we got going on i don't know what's happening on the screen right now there we go what's up james what's up long time no see Dude, it's been a while, man, and I'm so stoked to have you on. I, I was talking you up before the show, man, just about the channel and everything. Like, um, I, I was just noticed on your channel the other day. I, I didn't know how many subs you're at now, but, I mean, that thing is blown up. Um, and, uh, you know, you deserve it, dude. I mean, all the work you put into it. I was looking at your uh, draft guy. If you guys... If you guys want to know anything about the draft, and I got all the slides tonight of all his rankings and everything, uh, you can go to A to Z's, um, their website or Twitter or your site or your page. Yeah, if you, if you go to my Twitter at No Flags Film, it's my pinned tweet. There you go. So it's right on the top at No Flags Film. This guy's put together and exhausted. I think this is three years in a row you've done this now um but what's cool about it now is it's interactive so um it's right on the page you can go click on whoever look at whoever the strengths weaknesses all it's it's insane dude i don't know how you have the time to do it like it it blows my mind but it's pretty awesome man so um yeah just kind of you know as far as um like coming into this draft um what would you say is the most heavy groups, you know, as far as position groups coming into this draft. Yeah, I think the strongest position group uh, at the top and in terms of depth is receiver. I have 17 receivers in my top 100, which I think is as many as I've ever had. And like, even when you get outside of the third round, there's fourth, fifth round guys that I like that maybe have, you know, a couple uh, key flaws or something, but could still end up being good players. So uh, I think this is the year to need receiver and also the year to need offensive tackle. I have nine offensive tackles in my top 50, I believe. Um, let's see. Yeah. Nine in my top 50. And then there's a couple other guys that are like third round grades, um, that have some upside. So for the Titans, it's, uh, it's, you know, this is the class for the Titans. If only they had some more draft picks. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, and if you look, I guess we can just go ahead and start at tackle because that's obviously one of the, we, there's a lot of needs for the Titans, but that's obviously one of the biggest needs we've seen the last. It, it's insane. And, and to think that the last two years, the Titans have literally, I mean, now you could even say statistically, I think, have had the two worst left tackles in the league and Dennis Daly than Andre Dilly. I really think <laughs> stats would back that up as far as sacks given up per downs, maybe and stuff. Yeah, like I mean, that. there, you know, there might be some guy that like came in for the Panthers, 
you know, one week for an injury or something right. that was worse. But as far as like, you know, full time, like heading into the season, this is our guy. Yeah, it, it's uh, it, it can't get much worse than that. Right. And um, so the, obviously we all know, um, you know, the guys on the board, of course, you got all Fashano or the Fashanu are the top two guys. Um, in, is there any world where you see Joe Alt being available and the Titans don't pick him? I definitely could. I, stuff that I was hearing at the Senior Bowl, it seems like the Titans are um, very much leaning towards drafting a receiver. The uh, the the history with Callahan taking uh, you know taking Jamar Chase obviously like plays into it, but um, it, it definitely it wouldn't surprise me if they ended up going like I think if Neighbors is available. Uh, I that would be my guess that they would take. I I think if Joe Alt's there, you got to take him. But um, it, it wouldn't surprise me if they ended up taking a receiver over Joe Alt. I don't think I don't think that they would take another offensive tackle over Joe Alt. Um, it seems to be the consensus that he's like what the league views as offensive tackle one in this class, um, and it, it also seems like. Olu Fashanu might not be uh, the the NFL's second best tackle, even though he is mine. And James, I know. So there's a guy in, in Titans for Life, James. I know there's a guy on <laughs> this list, uh, uh, Fuaga, that that you've been super high on uh, this whole this whole time. And I want to get your thoughts on Fuaga, James, and you know. Um, mm -hmm how you feel about him and and i, I just kind of want to see how you feel about it too uh james foster um as far as fuaga goes well for me fuaga uh as a right tackle is the guy who you know he's he's to me a standout i've, I've got him um at number three uh in tackles for me because he he's just one of these guys that just doesn't seem to screw up very much and when he, you know, the few times that he does, uh, that he does, it's his hand placement is, uh, gets a little sloppy as sometimes when he's tired. Um, but you know, I don't have, you know, I, I don't, I, to me, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's tiers, right? I've got all Fashanu and Fuaga in the first tier. And then everyone else is kind of, you know, you got your Mims, your Lathams. Um, I have him and I have those two in the second tier. Those are the guys to me that, you know, uh, are kind of like the guys who, who these, these guys I think are going to go in the first round. Um, so when it comes to like Fashanu, I understand why, uh, why a lot of, a lot of teams are, are kind of iffy on, 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 uh, Fashanu, but overall, I think he's, you know, any of those top three, four guys, I think if you take them, you're not, you, it's not going to be a miss. You know, it's just not going to be one of those things where it's, oh, oh, it was a, you know, flop. There's a bad, uh, you know, there's a bad pick. I think all all four of those guys at the top of my list are are guys that are going to be really good. Um, I, I, the one that I have the most doubts about is Latham. Uh, and what do you think about Fuaga? Um James, as far as yeah, I and I love Fuaga as a guard, and I like him as a right tackle. Um, I think my biggest issue with Fuaga is just does he have the range to keep up with true edge speed? I feel like that was the main time that he would get really tested in college and give up some losses or some like hanging on by a thread wins. Um, I think his hand usage is overall really good. Uh, there are, he does have some issues like not to get too technical, but he has this issue where he'll throw his outside hand. Like he'll, he'll punch that early and just leave it hanging out there. And then if that gets swiped down, he doesn't really have the recovery ability to, to protect the edge. And so you would also see some losses uh, in those situations, but I think he's just a, a mauling dominant run blocker, very assignment secure. Um, and I think as a right guard, like he has 
definitely all pro potential. Um, but he, he's in that tier of players that I would try at tackle first. Like I'm not drafting him as a guard. Um, I would try him at tackle and like know that he kind of has a fallback option as a guard. Um, and then JC Latham, I think is the strongest player in this class. Like his ability to, to anchor against power rushes and drive people off the line of scrimmage in the run game, I think is second to none. Um, Alabama's offense does a very good job of protecting their offensive tackles from having to take like deep pass sets and really, uh, really block uh, like wide nine speed rushers. And that's why there is kind of a history of Alabama tackles busting. Like if you go back to Evan Neal's tape in college, he wasn't really having to to get that much depth and block speed rushes and gets to the league. And that exact issue ended up being his biggest one. And so I do kind of have some concerns about JC Latham. I think he's a little bit more boom bust. Um, and it also wouldn't surprise me if his long-term landing spot ended up being inside, but I just think his, his power and natural talent uh, is something that I'm wanting to bet on in the top 15. And you had in your in your top fifth. No, I'm sorry. This was your Senior Bowl winners and losers. Another guy that a lot of people have talked about, um, and, and a lot of people have like loved this guy. And you had him in your losers bracket of, of uh, Patrick Paul. Um, he's a guy that got a lot of play, and uh, his his name was out there a lot. But um, what did you did you go to the you went to the Senior Bowl, right? Yeah, I was at the Senior Bowl. Okay, kind of talk about him and just kind of what you saw in him. Yeah, so Patrick Paul has about the longest arms that you'll ever see for an offensive tackle, 36 and a quarter inch, I believe, 96th percentile for offensive tackles. Um, I think that that almost works to his disadvantage sometimes uh, because – he is very, he's like the definition of a block catcher. He has a tendency to be very late and wide with his punch and he'll let pass rushers get their hands on his frame. And then at six foot seven, he's almost never going to be the lower player in the interaction. So he gets driven back kind of easily. Like for him to block power rushers, it's imperative that he establishes early contact and he just doesn't really have the the hand technique down to do that at this point. And so for me, you know, like after the senior bowl, I thought he had some wins, he had some losses. I didn't lower my grade on him or anything, but I thought that he was a player that um, if he had shown some development from his last year at college to now at the senior bowl, and he looked a lot more confident with his hands, then I could maybe get on board with him as a, as a late late first maybe early second um but for me he's like firmly in the late second round tier just because i think those issues still popped up in mobile i mean to me did it when you were at the senior bowl did it did it, did it look like he was his hands were slow because it looks to me yeah. maybe maybe it's because his arms are so long that it kind of gives that perception or whatever but it looked to me like his hands were really slow yeah, no, he he's uh, habitually late with his punch and like having 36 inch arms, it almost it almost seems like he would have more su more success if his arms were a little bit shorter because it's like less distance that he had to travel. If he had kind of like stubby 33 inch arms and he could just quickly shoot his hands inside when he was late or he had to replace his punch or something, um, I feel like he could be a lot more solid against power, but uh, yeah, with, with 36 inches, it, it, you get the sense sometimes that it's like, he just doesn't know what to do with his hands. Yeah. Uh, and what, another thing that I, that I kind of noticed on him is that his hands are fairly large, that his hands, not just his, you know, not just his arms, but his hands are fairly large. And it, and, and what concerns me about that is in the NFL, you know, um, uh, those guys who are going to bull rush him to the inside and he gets that lock in on that, on those pads that uh, what concerns me is that, you know, you, you could end up with a lot of injuries in your hands because your hands are so big. 
Um, what what do you think about uh, you know that as as part of your evaluation? Yeah, I, that's something that I hadn't thought of, um, but it's a good point. Um, you know, I I had never. Yeah, I never really considered like bigger hands uh, resulting in in more injuries. But, you know, normally for an offensive tackle, I would want bigger hands just because it's like a firmer grip, more impactful initial punch. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you could be onto something. Yeah, but at some times they become too big, you know. You got a right. bigger punch and all that. But, you know, then all of a sudden, you know, you've got, you know, it, it, God, he's, he's, he's a massive man. He's what, 330, 335, something like that? Yeah, He's and he moves man. he moves really well at his size. Yeah, you, you just but you get every time that I've saw someone get into his shoulder pads, get into his body, he seemed to struggle a little bit with that. Definitely. It's insane how much goes into these guys, man. And I'm sure there's like you know, official scouts there and all this stuff. It tell us about that, man. How was the experience overall at the senior bowl? Did you talk to like scouts and things like that did you get to meet some cool people and stuff like that so i didn't really talk to any scouts i was kind of just like hanging out in the stands uh watching players um gotcha but yeah i mean it, it was it's i think the biggest part about the experience from a, a draft evaluation perspective is seeing guys up close because sometimes you're watching like some grainy all 22 film it can kind of be deceptive as far as like how big they are or maybe they don't they aren't as as fluid athletically as you thought um and so like someone i'm trying to think of an example like darius robinson is a, a perfect example edge rusher out of missouri like you see him stand next to him on the field and it's like okay this is a starting defensive end in the NFL. Um, and like some other guys, DJ James is an Auburn cornerback that I, I really liked on tape, his movement skills and change of direction. And then seeing him in person, he's, he's really undersized. He's like 170 pounds. So I'm already having to, uh, kind of forgive him on that front. And then seeing him in person, he just like, wasn't that smooth of a mover. And so it, it can kind of, it, it's not going to like, move a guy up or down two rounds or something. But if you've got a cluster of, you know, third round grades for offensive tackles, it can break up that cluster and kind of help order them for you. Uh, Power Hour has a question for you. Has, uh, hey, James, good seeing you. How did you feel about Tavondre Sweat? Yeah, I thought uh, Tavondre Sweat, he had that really dominant rep where he just uh, folded the center in half uh, with a bull rush. I thought outside of that, his pass rushing uh, reps were kind of underwhelming. He's so I, I think the first thing with Tavondre Sweat is that he didn't weigh in at the senior bowl. He's listed at like 364 pounds on Texas's website. Uh, he was the only player at the senior bowl that chose not to weigh in. So that tells me that he was a Never. lot heavier than uh, he probably wanted NFL teams to know. So it'll be interesting to see what he weighs in at uh, at the combine. Um, but the issue with a player of his size is that he's not very explosive off the snap. And then when he does win with his hands, which happens pretty often, he doesn't really have the closing speed to like turn the corner and get to the quarterback. Um, so I like his power and I like his hand usage, but I feel like as a pass rusher, he might be more of a pressure guy than a sack guy because he just doesn't have those like elite movement skills to to finish those uh pressure opportunities into sacks and i thought you know like he had that one one-on-one -on -one rep uh the bull rush against uh bo limmer the arkansas center that went viral outside of that he wasn't really winning that often um especially on the first day of the senior bowl he didn't really seem to have much of a pass rushing plan he definitely got better uh the second and third practice but yeah, with with Tavondre Sweat, it's just like number one, can he play a full load of snaps? And then number two, if he's going to be a nose tackle, how much how much is his pass rushing juice that he showed in college going to be able to translate to the NFL? Um, you know, I I still really like him. I have him as a top forty player, but 
uh, there are some kind of like similar to Jordan Davis type of questions with him. Now, you were at the Senior Bowl, and there's a guy. There's another position of need for the Titans uh, that I that I've been kind of trying to get a feel for, and it's uh, T.J. Oh, what is his last name? Uh, Tampa. T.J. Champa. Uh, I, I think he's out of Iowa or Iowa State. Iowa State. Yep. Yeah. What did you? What was? What was your thoughts on him? Did you? Did you get to see him? Any? Did you? Uh, so he wasn't at the Senior Bowl. Um, but I do really like TJ Tampa. Uh, I think his last name is very, uh, appropriate for what I think his, his best role is, which is like a, a flat corner and cover two as someone that can just crash down on underneath zones, lay huge hits, be a good run defender. He has good speed, uh, to, to, you know, cover routes vertically, uh, I think the the biggest question that I have for him is can he turn and play man coverage? Uh, you do see some stiffness on tape, especially the Texas game. Like Xavier Worthy was just getting them turned around like crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a big fan of, of TJ Tampa. I have him as my eighth ranked cornerback. Um, I think there's like a, a clear top five or six guys. And then you get into, you know, Kamari Lassiter, TJ Tampa, uh, Ennis Rakestraw out of Missouri. Um, I think he's in that range of, of second round corners. Um, getting back to the, the tackle position. Um, if the Titans do go and we'll talk about the wide receivers here in a minute. Um, but if the Titans do go wide receiver in the first round and say, you know, in the second round, they want to they want to get a tackle or there's a tackle left that would be, um, you know, valuable enough to take in the second round. Um, is there a second round tackle or is there a tackle you think that would be valuable enough where they pick in the second or one of these guys that you have, say, like a Guyton, Tyler Guyton or whoever. And I don't honestly, I'm not a big draft guru guy. I don't get into it until kind of right before the draft. So I don't know really. I know some of them that are right tackle, left tackle, this and that, who could potentially be guards in the NFL and all that. But any of these guys that you could see being a good value where the Titans pick in the second and could be a potential starter at left tackle oops i was muted uh, i really like oh, karan did. amagaji out of yale he's a left tackle uh the biggest issue with him is just level of competition like he wasn't going up against anyone that could really challenge him but he's got elite traits in terms of size and movement skills he's a dominant run blocker uh unlike patrick paul and I actually just updated uh, my rankings. I do have Amagaji over Patrick Paul now, but uh, unlike Patrick Paul, he's really confident and accurate with his hands, plays with uh, good strike timing. He's got a good anchor. He's aware of stunts and twists. Like it, Players like him are, are some of my favorite players to watch just from a pure entertainment standpoint where you've got an NFL player going up against uh, future bankers and accountants. Cause like, he's just driving them 15 yards off the line of scrimmage. It's, it's pretty hilarious to watch, um, going up against like Cornell or Brown or whatever. Um, so I, I think that he is a player I'm a big fan of. He actually wasn't, didn't play in the senior bowl cause he finished his year injured. Um, but I like Amagaji and then as a right tackle, I really like Roger Rosengarten out of Washington, um has a ton of pocket range he's probably one of the most athletic tackles in this class but he doesn't he didn't struggle as much with anchoring in college but he is kind of undersized and like skinny limbed so i i question uh, his ability to do that at a high level in the nfl um and then like christian jones and uh javon foster so javon foster out of missouri is a left tackle just a little bit stiff in terms of recovery ability. Um, but he's got experience blocking outside zone, just had really good tape 
at Missouri, but in the one-on-ones at the senior bowl, especially when, when they would get him with like an inside counter, uh, kind of struggles to recover inside. So that's why I've got him down in the fourth round. Awesome, man. And uh, these, these lists are fantastic, man. And all these lists we're showing up here tonight are obviously uh, Mr. Foster. They're all his lists. So go check that out on, uh, on his Twitter at no flags film it's pinned at the very top you can go look at all these guys you can click on them you can see all the weaknesses strengths um it's it's pretty cool man um i do want to get let's get to wide receivers that's um, a lot of people are talking about that like you said i mean uh it, it wouldn't surprise you at all if if the titans went wide receiver in the first round over even if joe alt was there i guess depending on who is available there um but you know there's some guys in this wide receiver class that um you know have uh that are looking pretty good and um you know Malik Neighbors is the name that comes to mind um at number 7 but what is your uh what is your opinion on Marvin Harrison Jr and Malik Neighbors if you were going to compare them and is Marvin Harrison Jr like is, is he that much better than neighbors? Is he, you know, or do you kind of see them similar as far as skills and, you know, their ability in the NFL? Yeah, I think uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik neighbors are pretty close. Um, I would say that I think that there's a, a smaller gap between them than uh uh, than a lot of people would lead you to believe. And that has more to do with me just loving Malik neighbors tape, as opposed to like really any issues that I have with Marvin Harrison jr. Malik neighbors, like there's no one in this class that can decelerate and cut off routes on the vertical plane as quickly as he can. Like he can be going full speed, sink his hips, just completely cut off his momentum instantly turn around and create like five to seven yards of separation on a simple, you know, eight yard hitch route. Like, uh, it's, it's insane what he can do after the catch just eats up open space, breaks tackles, um, makes people miss in the open field. I want to see what he weighs in at cause he looks kind of skinny on tape and he's listed at like two Oh five, I think on LSU's website, but these teams lie all the time. So it'd be nice to get some confirmation, uh, on that. And I think the main thing that puts Marvin Harrison Jr. ahead of him is that he's so much stronger at the catch point. Malik neighbors can kind of get bodied in those contested situations. But uh, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of both of them. And if Malik neighbors uh, fell to seven and they ended up taking him, you know, I would be disappointed because I, I still think that offensive tackles a bigger need, but like I, I wouldn't be disappointed for too long because uh, Malik neighbors would be a Titan and he's an outstanding prospect. Yeah. I, I think the, the only thing for me with the difference between Harrison and neighbors is that Harrison's got four inches on him. And to me that, that can be a big deal in the NFL, mm -hmm. but you know, but you know, once again, I don't think either one of these guys are going to be a bust, uh, you know, uh, barring unforeseen like injuries or something like that. But, you know, another guy who I thought was that the Rome Odunz, I think is how you pronounce his name. Odunze. Odunze, yeah. He, geez, Louise, the kid is just, wow. There are times yeah. where he just looks wow. And then there are times it looks like he takes a playoff every once in a while. So what do you think about uh, – what? Do you, Let's say the Titans don't take. A, a, let's say they go with a uh, with a uh, offensive tackle in the first round, and then wait for the, wait for the wide receiver in the second round. I've got Odani Mitchell. I think is how you pronounce his name. Um, Leggett and Walker all kind of clumped together. I, I you know I, when I'm looking at these wide receivers in the second round, I've got them all kind of clumped together right there. Um, is there one guy that you would take over the other? You know, uh, I think Mitchell uh, is Texas. He's 6'4". Leggett is, of course, South Carolina. Saw him. Lord have mercy. Did he kill us? Uh, did he kill Tennessee <laughs> at times? And then you got uh, Walker, uh, Devontae Walker out of North Carolina. Um, <clears throat> which one of these, if, 
I mean, which who would you t- think the Titans would go for early in the second round where the Titans have a second round pick right there? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of uh, it's I think it's a Donai Mitchell. I just call him A.D. Mitchell. Anytime, anytime there's like an abbreviation for one of these names, I'm just <laughs> doing that because we're still at the point where like everyone's calling people different stuff and like no one knows what the right answer is. But uh A.D. Mitchell is uh, actually my wide receiver for I have a a late first round grade on him. Oh, there you Um, go. I think that he's just got size, speed, fluidity. He doesn't drop the ball. He's smooth in and out of his breaks. He can beat press coverage at the line of scrimmage. Um, Really, the only issue with him is that he's not that productive after the catch. But I think that he has, you know, like, true uh number one receiver number one x receiver potential and that would definitely be my pick out of those top three um i like xavier leggett i think he he seems to be a pretty controversial prospect i've said i'm kind of a a a xavier leggett centrist like i think (laughs) you know he's he's a a decent route runner i think underrated as a route runner i would say he has the ability to violently accelerate in and out of breaks He's uh, he's kind of got some key on Coleman to him where there's like uh, he has a lot of highlight contested catches, um, mm-hmm. but also some drops and, you know, sometimes where I think he could use his physicality better at the catch point. And um, he really needs to improve beating press coverage. Uh, that would be my thing for him. And then I'm not a huge fan of Devontae Walker. I have him as wide receiver 18 with a, a fourth round grade. I think that he's he's tall and fast, but he struggles with press. He needs a lot of extra steps to, to sink his hips and cut off like comebacks and curls. And then he had some drop issues towards the end of the season last year at UNC, and that continued at the Senior Bowl. Like he could not catch anything. Uh, he was he was probably the worst receiver there, and. Um, so yeah, I would uh, I would probably not be thinking about Tez Walker personally until day three. And Saw says, "Ask James if he'd rather have Odunze, Odunze, or Neighbors." Uh, I would definitely rather have Neighbors. Um, I think Odunze is like a. Uh, to me, I think his most likely outcome is being a high-end wide receiver too. Like it's hard for me to s- see him being a bad player because uh, he's just so smooth and controlled. Um, I think he wins a ton of contested catches. Like he had a seventy-five percent contested catch rate this past season, but it's not like it's not like he has this insane athletic advantage over his college competition. And like it's not going to translate to the NFL. It's it's true elite focus and ball tracking skills in uh, tight contested situations. He's an underrated route runner. Um, supposedly he's going to run a really good forty time. I didn't see that elite speed on tape. Uh, it seemed like on vertical routes, um, corners were able to kind of stay on his hip uh, more than you want to see. But I think I mean I think he's a really solid player. I would still. If it's if it's neighbors over a, a tackle, I can live with that. If it's a Dunze over one of the tackles, I would I would strongly disagree with that though. Yeah, one of the guys that I that I've I don't know where to put him. I, I really don't. Is uh, Lad McConkey? I, I I've struggled with him a lot. Um, how, when you when you put yours, uh, can you throw that up back back up, Rossi? Uh, I think you uh, had him- yeah. I think you had him fairly high somewhere in there, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, you had him at your number seven receiver. How did you evaluate him? I, I, I was really kind of – I'm kind of torn with him. Yeah, he – I think he's probably the best route runner in this class in terms of quickness out of his breaks, but also just being like a smart route runner that can set up defenders, attack their leverage – He's got good speed. Uh, he can beat press coverage, but he has a very small catch radius. So he's not, I feel like if you've got him as, as like a, a quick slant guy on third and four, he might be getting torn in half. Um, 
even in today's NFL with, with the hitting rules. And he has some kind of like I have, if you see, I have that yellow injury indicator uh, for some guys I have, I have like a red yellow based on how major it is. I have minor injury concerns with him. He's just a small player. That's kind of always dinged up. He missed like a few games this past year was playing through injury. Um, so if you guaranteed that lad McConkey could be healthy through an entire season, he would be a, a firm first round grade for me, but just questioning whether he can hold up through 17 games uh, has him as an early second. Yeah. Like I said, I, I've yeah. just been really torn with them. Uh, it's been one of those things where I've been kind of like, I don't, you know, I, I, sometimes when I, when I, when I look at his film, sometimes I want to put him in the first round. And then sometimes when I look at his film, I'm going, uh, he's a, you know, he's a late second, early third round guy. You know, it, I'm just so torn with the guy. I don't know where to put him. I really don't. So uh, that kind of crystallizes some of the things that I've seen. So um, where do you, where do you, so is it, it, are you thinking that the Titans are going to go with a, a tackle in the first round and then a receiver or then, or reverse that a receiver in the first round and then a tackle? You think those two things have to kind of where they are? Yeah, if I had to bet, I would say they go receiver in the first, uh, tackle in the second, probably. Yeah, I think I, mean, I think there are some good developmental tackles uh, in the second, and like having having um, God, I get the I get the first names confused. Callahan, the O line coach, having him, that does make me a little bit more comfortable taking more of like a project um, in the second round. Even you know, I think still ideally you want to get the Joe Alt type of player that that already has a lot of it put together but um compared to where i was before um i'm a little bit more comfortable with them taking tackle in the second like i said if i was making the decision i'm still going joe alt if he's there if not i'm taking olu fashanu but based on what i expect to happen i would say receiver and then offensive tackle um are you going to the combine i am Man, I yep. wanted to go so bad. I was going to go last year. I wasn't able to go and and I was going to try cuz it's free. Like all you you just sign up if you would just want to go as a fan and sit in stands or whatever, you just got to sign up online. Um it's it's pretty cool how they do it. Uh, man, I would love to go to that. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I didn't know it was have they it's 8 days now. No, I guess there's 29 days in February, so it's a week. I guess I didn't realize it was a week long. It used to be like three or four days long. I feel like, but yeah, I think, um, I think like the first day or the first couple days might not be, uh, there's not like a ton of stuff going on. It's like, they're, you know, registering the players. Maybe they do like measurements and, and stuff like that. And then the drills start yeah. the second or third day. But yeah, uh, my company, they just, uh, they got an Airbnb for us. So I just uh, found out that I was going a few hours Heck ago. Yeah, actually. That's awesome, man. That, that's going to be an awesome uh, experience. Are, are you going to be able to like go on the field at all? Or like, you know, I have no idea. Or... Yeah, okay. this is, this is the first year that like A to Z really sent people to this kind of thing. And the first year nice. that I've, uh, same thing with the senior bowl. Uh, like the senior bowl, I was, I basically snuck onto the field. Um, right. cause there's like 10 minutes where they, they let media people go on, uh, to interview the players. So I just like went on and then kind of like hung out in the back corner, uh, while the That's lady was great. coming through. So yeah. Um, got on there for the second half of the practices. Nice. If man. Had, and if Oh, go ahead, to, James. Yeah. If you had to guess, um, uh, who do you think is the guy who, who you've got in the first round that has the most question marks? That's a good question. Uh, let me check here. Guy that I have in the first round with the most. Uh, so I would say here? Tyler Guyton, probably. Um, he, I, I forget who said this, but someone said that he could win half of his reps with his hands tied behind his back. Uh, he's offensive tackle out of uh, Oklahoma, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, he just has rare 
recovery ability and movement skills for someone that's six foot seven, 328 pounds. Like he just glides around the pocket and has those movement skills that you can't really teach. Um, similar to Patrick Paul, where he's kind of unrefined with his hand usage though. He's a converted tight end transferred from TCU. This was his first like full season starting. So it's, it's more understandable with him than with Patrick Paul, who's like a three year starter, tons of experience. Tyler Guyton's super young, uh, still has, you know, a ton of room to develop for development, but he's someone that's, I think, I feel very confident he's going to go in the first round, but, uh, I wouldn't feel that confident that he would be a, a quality starter day one as a rookie. Interesting. And um, guys, if you haven't hit that like button for us yet, Titan Max, we appreciate you. Um, hit that like button. If you haven't uh, done that for us yet, we've been, uh, we've had a, we've had a good little run here on the Rossi report the last mm -hmm. five, six weeks. This off, usually the off season takes a dive, but luckily we've had some, you know, pretty good news come out with all the coaches and all that stuff. So it's kind of given everybody a boost across the board. Um, so that's been nice that we've actually had some stuff to actually talk about in the off season. But hey, things are happening, man. You got the NFL combine coming up. You got the draft not long after that. So mm -hmm. before you know it, man, these guys will be uh, um, in mini camps and uh, training camps and all that type of stuff. Um, so a lot going on and, you know, a lot has been made of um, the whole Brock Bowers thing, like him saying that he would love to go to the Titans and um, this and that. I, I personally don't see a world in when where we pick Brock Bowers at number seven. I just don't see it happening. Um, I, I If they did, I think it would be. I don't know, man. I just, I, I don't know if it'd be a massive mistake, but it just seems kind of silly if you'd have other guys up there who are, who are valued um, at wide receiver and all that. Like what I would say with Brock Bowers is everybody's talking about how he said he wanted to go to the Titans. But if you listen to the clip, like, he's clearly saying that he wants to go to Tennessee because it's in the South and close to Georgia. And it's right. like, I don't know. I feel like that kind of got overblown as far as people thinking that could be a, a realistic option. I mean, you never say never, but that would definitely surprise me a, a lot if if the Titans took Brock Bowers, even though like, I think he's I mean, a really he's, good player. He's a top 10 talent. I mean, and he's a guy that, you know, a lot of people are saying that he could be that type of playmaker like Kelsey you can line them up here and there and this and that so I mean you know I guess it wouldn't shock me if the Titans just happen to take them I mean they've done crazier stuff in the past you know what I mean but hopefully you know some of these things have been fixed and I do want to get to so you released an interesting video I, I believe it was three or four weeks ago where you basically fixed the Titans you you cured in all of the Titans woes and needs um, in, in one fell swoop. I thought it was actually a really good video. If y'all haven't seen it yet, go check it out on A to Z film rooms, YouTube. Um, but I thought it was pretty interesting. I mean, of course you see your, you had an early mock draft here. I'm sure your mock draft will change like everybody else's as time goes along and you see players and this and that. But um, I thought it was interesting, Legarius Sneed, uh, you picked up in the free agency, which I would love that. Um, kind of talk about this list a little bit. I, I like the Michael on Juan Winu. Um, I love that pickup. Um, just kind of go over some of these and your thought process in, in this. Yeah, th the reaction to this video is so funny because everyone was like, <laughs> wow, you're such a great GM. Like, you should be the Titans GM. And it's like, yeah, right. it's pretty easy when I can decide what all the other 31 GMs are going to do and, like, have <laughs> have every player that I want, you know, signed to the Titans or whatever. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I think Michael and Winu should be the number one offensive line target for the Titans because he's really the one guy that – I feel confident can come in and be a quality starter at right tackle. 
And if you can, if you can knock out one of those tackle spots heading into the draft and then only have to focus on like, we're only, we only need our left tackle. Um, that that's a major boost. Um, I also think targeting a center like Tyler Biedesh, for example, but there's uh, several other good ones targeting a center and free agency, I think, uh, is the way to go instead of having to, to spend like a second or third round pick if they, if they end up trading on a center, it's just, you know, like I think there are decent, this is a decent center class, but um, that's a position that you can find in free agency. And ideally I want to knock as many of those off of the list uh, before the draft. Um, and then, yeah, Legereus Sneed, I think would be a slam dunk signing. He's really uh, taken a major step forward this year, went from playing in the slot and being kind of a blitzer guy in, in Spag's defense to now they've got him as like an outside lockdown corner and they've got McDuffie in the slot. Um, and I think he could answer a lot of their questions at, at corner. So where does Unwinu uh, start in your Titans offense? What position? Right tackle. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I mean it'd be it'd be a heck of a pickup. Um, yeah, I mean I, I saw a lot of those comments. A lot of people were hating on the Zach Moss uh, pickup, which Zach Moss had a good season. Like I mean, he showed up. He had the best season as, of his career. Of course, he torch the freaking titans i was at that game it was unbelievable i've never seen the titan it's been a long time since i've seen the titans get run on like that i yeah. mean they just ran it he was averaging like 10 yards a carry of course uh you know a lot of those yards that he got in the season were like in two games he had two like really monster games but i, I you know i mean if you're looking for a guy to back up spears why not you know what i mean he, i think he would be uh, a good option to back up Spears. I mean, I don't know. Am I wrong on that? Yeah. I mean, I think that, um, that second running back spot, you can kind of plug any guy back. in there. Um, you know, just get someone that, that breaks some tackles and has good size can last the season. Like I wouldn't want another third down back with Ty J Spears. Um, but any kind of early down, more power back, uh, I think would be a good fit with him. Yeah. And Brian, I didn't see, I didn't see what you said, so it's all, it's all good, brother. Um, so, um, Mike, this is a good question. So they announced that EA twenty five is going to be EA Sports twenty uh, two thousand twenty five is coming out, which it's like, dude. I used to play that freaking game religiously when I was a kid. My mom got me, it shows my age, but I remember when my mom got me a PlayStation 1. And, dude, I, I constantly played it. That's all I played, uh, Dynasty mode of NCAA. So I really hope they do it justice, man. And, and I'm sure they will. But, you know, uh, Power Hour saying, who will live up to the hype more, Caleb Williams, NFL career, or, or the game? I, I trust Caleb Williams more than EA because I've seen these <laughs> right. most recent Madden games and uh, not their oh, best man. work. So, like, I'm so excited yeah. for the NCAA game, but I am kind of scared just because, like, Madden's really taken a nosedive. So I'll, I'll go Caleb. Yeah. One yeah, of the things I think that, that we've got to keep in mind is, is that you got, you got teams that may want to trade with the Titans at seven. Because you know, I, there's there are some quarterbacks that I think are going to be there uh, around seven to ten that you know these teams. Let's say um, I don't know uh, who would it be. Maybe Minnesota wants to wants to trade up and get a quarterback, and you know, make like maybe a Michael Penix or or uh, who would be there by that time? Uh, maybe a Jaden Daniels. Um, what would you what do you think it would take for the Titans to move down to uh, move down to I think it's what 12 is that where they're yeah so the Vikings are at 11, 11 um yeah. if you go back to 2018 the bills traded up with the bucks from 12 to seven and it costs them two second round picks Ooh. so yeah 
that's I think yeah something something similar to that uh, would be probably the the price. Uh, so it was the their first round and didn't, and then another two second rounds, correct? Yep. That, so do you think with the Titans with all the needs the Titans have and as deep as the draft is on certain positions like wide receiver and uh, offensive line, do you think that that would be something that the Titans would uh, would entertain? Yeah, I think um, I would be in favor of trading down to 11 or 12. And then if you're still able to get like an Amarius Mims, who I'm really high on, um, and then you get those two other second round picks, that allows you to attack receiver, corner, um, center, if you don't yeah. grab one in free agency. Like the Titans have so many needs. And so if you can just get more swings at the bat, like they're not one player away from – uh, you know, being a contender, I don't think it, they they just need a an influx of of young talent on this team. So, um, within reason, yeah, like any anything you can do to to trade down it and get more picks in the top fifty, I would be in favor of. I'm just like, uh, you know, we're not one uh, player away; we're one offensive line away. To be honest with you, we're, yeah, <laughs> we're one offensive line away. We're one uh, one defensive back room away. I mean, we're, we're 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 a lot of players away. But I was just, you know, kind of interested in that because, you know, you know Rand maybe, you know, I, I, I from you know my understanding of the guy, he he has the propensity to will and deal when he needs to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I um, think that there's that stretch in the low teens of Minnesota, Denver, I think Vegas, and is it um, New Orleans? Like, they all theoretically need a quarterback. And so if Jaden Daniels or Drake May falls, or if one of them wants to trade up for J.J. McCarthy, I think um, that could definitely be in play, trading down from seven. Yeah, And James, uh, I know, uh, well, James Foster, uh, I know you got to get out of here. You get out at seven, but um, man, we appreciate you coming on. And guys in the chat, everybody in the chat, if you have not followed, uh, if you're a, if you're a Titans fan, you probably already follow uh, James uh, on YouTube, A to Z Film Room, and on Twitter at No Flags. For, he was formerly at No Flags Film. I guess he still is on Twitter, but. Uh, Man, uh, shout out to you, man. We're we're so happy as a as the Titans community content creators like that. When we heard you were doing what you're doing now, man, I, I know for myself and all of us here, we were super stoked for you to get your opportunities, man. And and you've run with it, and uh, it's pretty cool, man. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing, bro. We'll keep listening, and watching, and all that stuff. So, uh, but thanks for coming on, dude. We we appreciate it. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me. I'll Been nice you. hanging out yeah, with man. you again, man. <laughs> nice to see you, James. All right. So yeah, um, we'll go another couple minutes here. Um, and uh, let me see here if I can get this thing fixed. Um, but I I thought it was interesting, like how he kind of fixed the Titans. Like he said, you know, it's it's easy when uh you don't really know what other 31 other teams are doing and who they're picking up um legerious sneed is an is a guy that the titans need a, a cornerback dude like they need one so bad i mean you could almost argue they need a starting cornerback uh, a, a high caliber cornerback more than anything um you know because christian fulton is gone you know he's gonna be gone and so you got, and then, uh, what's his name? Um, man, I'm drawing a blank. The other, the other, on the other side. Um, I'm completely drawn, drawing a blank <laughs> right now. Uh, well, the mean, cornerback from Tampa that they signed, uh, last year that had a well, good I, season. I think the Titans are, are in it, or they're in both a good and a bad situation. At uh, the good situation is they've got plenty of cash. Um, yeah. The 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 bad, bunting. Yeah, bunting. Sean Murphy bunting. Yeah. yeah. The uh the the bad thing is they have a lot of cap space because they haven't been very good. And you know, and a lot of the guys that, that they signed over the years just didn't pan out and they're able to cut them and, and, and let them go. Um 
I think I think the the biggest problem the Titans are going to have this this offseason is figuring out who they want to you know what where they want to address certain positions. Do they want to address uh, this position in in the draft, or do they want to go free agency? And if they want to go free agency, what what do they want to spend on this uh, uh, on this particular spot? I think one of the offensive line tackles has to be done in free agency. It's just, yeah, it's, it is what it is. You can't draft two uh, first rounds when you only have one first round pick. So, um, so yeah, I think Winu, uh, that Michael yeah. Winu, dude, I I love that. And yeah, I think you have to address be... the for the intermediate to short to intermediate term. You have to address at least one of the corner positions in free agency. Okay. So those, that's two things you have to address immediately in free agency, but which, where, you know, where do you want to, you know, where do you want to go with that? You know, is this going to be your number one corner or is this going to be your number two corner that you're going to get out of the uh, free agency? So uh, it's, it's a, it's a world of hurt at the same time. These, you know, they have to do the, the analytics. They're going to have to figure out where they want to address and what they want to address in the, in, in the free agency market and then how much they're willing to pay. I mean, right. you can't you can't throw, you know, sixty million dollars at one guy. You know, you've got to figure yeah. out. You know, you got to figure out what you want to do and how you and how you want to take care of it. The draft, uh, to me, is one of those things where there there's a level of uncertainty. You know, when you go into free agency, there's a level of certainty because you've seen there, there's enough film on the guys. You know, there's a lot of film on them playing at the NFL level. Going into the draft, right. there's not there, there's no film on these guys playing in the NFL level, so there's a level of uncertainty going in that. Sure, the measurables are there, but you can have bust just as way you know, like you can have booms in the draft. You know, who would have thought a guy like uh, uh, you know a a a, a guy uh, like um would could come in and win a bunch of Super Bowls being drafted in the seventh round? You know what I'm saying? Who would, who would have thought that? But yet, you right. know, he's he's the goat for a reason. You know, um, you know, Tom is a goat for a reason, and and uh, you know, it, there's a boom and bust in the draft. So you got to man. I would love. You do it. I would love to take a ride up to like. I don't. I don't know if it's too late to get the tickets. Like I said, you can get free tickets to the combine. Um, you know, just take a ride up to like March second is when they do the quarterbacks, oh. receivers, mm. running backs, and then March third. So March second is a Saturday. March third is a Sunday. They do the QBs, wide receivers, running backs on that Saturday, and then on that Sunday they do offensive linemen. Man, I would love to if I could take a ride up there and just stay for a night and come back that Sunday or whatever and, and be there. I think it'd be a cool experience, but I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it's something I could swing, but if I do, I'll get a lot of good footage, but oh, yeah. man, um, I got to get going. Um, I appreciate you coming on James as always. And I appreciate everybody in the chat. Y'all been awesome in the chat. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, uh, any last words, my friend, you know, uh, the, we have a, a, a really nice uh, off season coming up. Uh, we've got some things that we've been talking about on the channel doing during the off season. Um, so stay tuned, you know, uh, and keep going watching. Uh, there's, there's some things that are in the works. You know, I'm thinking about starting a show. I've just got to figure out what night to do it on and things like that. Um, thinking about doing, you know, uh, starting a show. So, um, you know, in addition to this show, so, uh, you know, the, the, the channel is changing. It's all, you know, we, we have to roll with the punches. We have to go with time, you know, and change over time. So the channel is going to get better. I promise. Um, you know, you think we're good now, wait, you know, just wait a little bit, you know, it's going to get better and better and better. Um, you know, and as always, you know, keep it real guys. Yeah. Keep it real guys. Tighten up everybody. We'll see you next time.